the last time we put this together, uh, we have been criticized that um, we are distorting the party with majority in parliament. For the records, as we know, there has been a gazetting of the parliamentary election results. And as of now, according to what has been gazetted at Assembly Press, the New Patriotic Party carry 137 seats. The National Democratic Congress carry 137 seats. There's an independent member of parliament. The independent member of parliament for Formona in the Oboase area, he has written that he will sit with the New Patriotic Party. In the circumstances, the MPP will carry 183, 138 seats. NDC will have 137. For today, today is Thursday. That's, that's the story today. Tomorrow is Christmas Day. And the next day is Boxing Day. And then there's Sunday, there's Monday, and that's Working Day is Tuesday. There will be a lot of legal action on Tuesday in terms of MPP claim that they will be challenging at least seven of the constituents that have been given to the NDC. The NDC have strongly made a case that they have won Techiman South. They have made that case to the media. Yesterday, Peter McMenu, the chairman of the MPP's campaign, contradicted that case. He met the press and gave the results of Techiman South that the MPP had won. So when we are speaking now, we are speaking based on what has been gazetted. That's the position of the law. 137, 137 with an independent member of parliament. So we will assume that the MPP, if the speakership is to be selected today, will select the speaker for this 275 chamber of parliament. Now, at our last analysis, we posited that uh, there are three people who are contesting. Let's see the three quickly again now. Okay, so that's Justice Jones Doche uh, on your screen right now. He was the first one we talked about. He's a very distinguished Supreme Court judge, and uh, we know him for the words that he gave in the election petition and other rulings that he has made. But Justice Doche was thought to have been in the final contest uh, for the race of Chief Justiceship, which went to his colleague, uh, Mr. Justice Eniebua. Doche was the first person we talked about. Next after Doche is, of course, the incumbent. Professor Aaron Michael Kwe, uh, who is a former member of parliament himself, a distinguished professor of political science and a lawyer, um, and a former member of parliament and former spokesperson of the MPP's campaign of 1992, is also uh, in the race. He's the incumbent speaker at this time. Let's, let's move to the next one. And that was the Honorable Freddie Blay. Uh, Freddie Blay has also been a two-time uh, first deputy speaker of parliament, a one-time second deputy speaker of parliament. He's actually a member of parliament for the CPP, and he held a seat for the Elembele constituency for many years uh, until he lost it in 2008. And since then, he's become a first vice chairman of the New Patriotic Party. He's also become an acting chairman of the MPP for the 2016 elections and eventually a substantive chairman of the MPP in, uh, in 2015. In 20, 2018, he, won, he was elected in 2018 for the substantive chairmanship of the MPP. And now he's still the chairman of the MPP. Freddie Blay is also in the reckoning to become the next Speaker of the Parliament. Okay, so where is our elimination going on? Let's put Justice Jones Doche's uh, photograph there, and then we will see. No, Justice Jones Doche first before. Uh, yes, this is Justice Jones Doche. Okay, now, uh, Justice Doche is the gentleman that we would like to eliminate from the race for now. And this is our own speculation. It's not, it's not written in any book. It's not in any letter. It's not in any memorandum. But it's our own speculation because... Given the distribution of parliament right now, there has to be a parliamentary speaker um, who can understand political nuancing. Justice Jones Doche is not a politician, he's a Supreme Court judge, and so he's an umpire. That's, just, that's what his training has been. He's been a judge for a very long time. He's a lawyer and an umpire. He's going to lead the parliament as a referee, and he's going to referee both sides and be an impartial arbiter. He does not possess the skills of political nuancing. At least that's not what his public service denotes. He's an umpire. There's going to be a lot of political nuancing required in a parliament that is so close. That's going to be the majority determined by a single seat out of 275 seats. So Justice Jones Doche's candidature is sort of winning away because people feel that you need somebody who has been a member of parliament before, who understands the nuances of parliament, who understands how the committee is working, not just appreciating it intellectually, but also having the experience to have gone through it. And so he's never been on any committee of parliament. He's never been a speaker of parliament. He's never been a second first deputy speaker of parliament. He's never been a member of parliament. He's never run for parliamentary elections. And so he's going to deal with a group of people, 275 members with their leadership who are key politicians. They are, they are you know, Real politicians, all day long politicians, they've run for parliament before. If you don't have the experience that they have, 
given the numbers and the similarity between the two, it's going to be very difficult to be able to navigate the political curves and junctions and cul-de-sacs that occur in this whole parliamentary practice. For that reason, we take out Justice Jones Doche tonight as the person who falls out of the top three because of his background and because of the way the parliament is. If the MPP had a big majority like they did in 2016, certainly Justice Doche would have brought to parliament and would have brought to Ghana's democracy the difference that we don't see in Africa, that the Supreme Court judge becomes a speaker of parliament, brings his expertise of neutrality, impartiality, his understanding and appreciation of the legal processes. He brings that expertise to parliament. It might also bring the legislature and the judiciary together in a beautiful way. It might connect the legislature and the judiciary in a way that has not been connected since the 1992 constitution. So that would have been very, very good for Ghana's democracy. The imagery of Ghana's democracy would have been served a very good meal if Justice Jones Doche would have become the speaker in circumstances when the majority was large and the majority was clear and you had a comfortable majority. However, in these current circumstances where the parliament, the distribution is what it is, which has surprised many and which has never been seen in the history of the Fourth Republic, you definitely do need a speaker who understands political nuance. And when the parliament was like that, the closest that we have come to in this situation was in the year 2000, when the MPP had led the parliament by a single two seats when they came from the opposition to, to occasion something like a 20% uh, a swing in parliament and won the parliamentary election by just single two seats at the helm of affairs at that time was Peter Alajete who was made the speaker of parliament he was a consummate politician to sort of go around the rigmarole of all the political situation that's the closest we have come this one is very very watertight and experts believe that this is not the time for somebody who has not been a member of parliament before who doesn't understand the parliamentary uh, not understand but hasn't experienced all the parliamentary processes to be the person so Justice Jones Doche out now, let's get back to the parliament picture. Okay, so we look at Michael Quay. That's okay. But Professor Michael Quay is here. He's the incumbent. Uh, but we're first going to talk about Freddie Blay. Let's get over to Freddie Blay and talk about him. So these are now the two men left in the race, as far as our books are concerned, as far as our speculative books are concerned, I should say. These are the two men left in the race. Freddie Blay and Michael Quay. So who is Freddie Blay? Let's talk about Freddie Blay. And what are the strengths that Freddie Blay has and what could be his potential weaknesses? Okay, so Freddie Blay comes to this with huge experience. He has been a second deputy speaker of parliament before from 1997, uh, from 1997, yes, up until 1990, uh, to the year 2000, he was second deputy speaker of parliament. He's been a first deputy speaker of parliament, first to Peter Ajete in that parliament I talked about, where the MPP had won by just a majority of two, Freddie was one of those who held the six or so CPP seats in that parliament. I think it was four CPP seats in that parliament. He held the seat from Ellen Bele. And if you know the story of Ellen Bele, Ellen Bele is the heart, the umbilical cord of the Convention People's Party. Ellen Bele contains the hometown of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. So, so Ellen Bele constituency is, is a thorough CPP constituency. And Freddie Blay uh, had held that seat uh, for a very long time. It was a seat that the CPP could win, even in the circumstance of 1992-96. Now they don't win it anymore. But even in those days when the CPP would win only five seats, Ellen Bele would be one of them. And it was carried by Freddie Blay. The last time I talked about his background, his connection to R.S. Blay, who was a big friend of the Big Six. Now, Freddie brings that experience to the seat. He is originally not an MPP member. He was a CPP member who became party chairman of the, of the group. Strengths for Freddie Blay is his affability. He's able to talk to people so that in the circumstances of what we are talking about right now, you will say that Freddie is the one who can sort of cut across. He's very jovial, etc. And he brings a huge media background to the chair, as we talked about the other day. He's the owner of the Daily Guide newspaper, one of the biggest newspapers in the country. So that also works for Freddie very well because he has a connection and there's going to be a lot of media coverage, media backlash, media interpretations, reporting on this particular parliament. This is a prop probably the closest parliament in the history of the African continent. I don't even think the UK, the, the, the home of parliamentary democracy, has had this kind of closeness before. They would have called it an impossible parliament, or as they call it, a hung parliament. But you're going to have this in a presidential democracy, where parliament is going to operate with the president. It's never really happened. It's a, it's a novel situation. And I suspect that um, many civil society organizations are going to be studying what is happening in Ghana's parliament from 2021. So people think Freddie is affable and he can talk to both sides. He has a hu huge media background. And the other thing is that the, the MPP members who are saying that Ghana is now becoming a two-party state, 
with a still silent majority in the middle. It's a two-party state with a lot of people who don't belong to either the, neither the MPP nor the NDC, and they make the decision for the election. It is being said that for people who are not members of the MPP, Freddie is an example that they will look at if they want to join the MPP. Because they will say that, I'm not a member of the MPP, I'm a member of another party. If I want to join the MPP, how would I be, what will be my growth path in the MPP if I'm a career politician? Freddie Blay is the person they can point to. He joined the MPP from the CPP. He was able and allowed to become the first national vice chairman. He was able and allowed to become the national chairman. And now he's going to be the speaker of parliament if he becomes. So those people are going to make that case for Freddie Blay that Freddie is the guy who is showing the uh, multiple colors of the new patriotic party that anyone from anywhere can join the MPP and with hard work you can rise to be party chairman and eventually become the speaker of parliament when the party has majority in the in the parliament so that's that's Freddie Blay that's what is going for him let's look at Professor Michael Quay now this is Professor Michael Quay uh, tribally he's a guy and uh, he grew up in Asamankesi in the area so he's both guy and a can of sorts Professor Michael Quay is a dying the wool MPP true blue person. Everybody knows that. Professor Michael Quay has managed the parliament right now, so he's the incumbent. So in terms of anybody, anybody being strong on the table, it is Michael Quay because he's the, he's the incumbent uh, uh, speaker of parliament. He has been running with the majority and the minority and, and all the things that he's done. And we're going to talk about some of the things that he's done. Because he's the incumbent, we will have to talk about some of the things that he's done because an incumbent is assessed on the basis of his work. You heard Akufado say that many times in the election that that he's going to be assessed on the basis of his work. So being the incumbent, Professor Michael Quay starts as very, very strong. His background is political science, and so he knows that he's also a lawyer. By the way, Freddie Blaze is a lawyer as well. He's also a lawyer, and so and uh, he's a former member of parliament. This is the first time he's come into the speakership. He never was first deputy speaker or second deputy speaker. He's come straight to be the, uh, the speaker of parliament in the 2017 arrangement. But how has he managed the speakership? What are the things that Michael Quay has done as member of parliament that could potentially swing this decision for him to become the speaker of parliament uh, if the MPP uh, majority is kept? Let's look at some of them uh, very quickly. Those who like Michael Quay have talked about the fact that um, members of the NDC have said publicly that Michael Quay has been a good speaker. That's very good for Professor Michael Quay because you're looking for a speaker that the NDC will accept. As I told you the other day, it has to be by consensus. You don't want the thing to go to a vote. And we showed you the other day what happens when it goes to a vote. You want it to be by consensus. So uh, here is something we picked up. Professor Michael Quay is my favorite speaker. This is Inusa Fuseni. Inusa Fuseni is a member of the National Democratic Congress. Everyone knows that. Now, Inusa Fuseni sits in the parliament and he makes comments like that about Michael Quay. That's very, very positive for, for the incumbent speaker because it is showing that uh, there are people among the NDC who accept Professor Michael Quay. Let's look at some of the other things uh, that, are go, that go for him. This way? Okay. Oh, no. I should, I should be going the other way. Sorry. All right, so people talk about inclusiveness, that Michael Quay has the ability to include people. It says uh, he had very close interactions with MPs from both sides. Let's look at the next one uh, on inclusiveness, uh, if I go that way. Okay, so inclusiveness, this is another one. It says, Professor Michael Quay brought to the Parliamentary Service Board for the first time deputy speakers one from majority and one from the minority to the parliamentary service board. This is very important. Perhaps they'll put this on the screen so you can see it. But this is very important. Okay, there it is. Uh, this one is particularly important because he brought to the parliamentary service board for the first time deputy speakers from the majority and one from the minority. So the parliamentary service board is the, is the sort of the board, the board of directors, if you like, that controls parliament. And until this decision by Michael Quay, the first deputy speaker and second deputy speaker were not members of the parliamentary service board. You know that the first deputy speaker will be with the majority, second deputy speaker will be with the minority. Only the speaker was a member of the parliamentary service board. But Michael Quay decided that the deputies must come in, and that meant that the minority in parliament had representation at the parliamentary service board because the second deputy speaker is with the minority. So this was an important decision in terms of moving parliament forward. Michael Quay demonstrated during his time as, as a Speaker of Parliament that he could work with people and he brought them together. Let's see uh, what else is under inclusiveness. Okay, uh, he brought the entire leadership uh, on both sides. Okay, so that's uh, inclusiveness again. Let's go to the next one. Uh, will, it, will it move? Okay, it does. Uh, inclusiveness is, uh, this was an important matter as well. Let's, okay, maybe they'll put it on the screen so you can see. This was an important matter. When Honorable IRS court case came up and Honorable members... Uh, 
uh, were invoking parliamentary privileges, the Speaker ruled in favor of the Honorable Member of Parliament and followed up with it with a special prosecutor. So Michael Kwe had been criticized for this decision, actually, by many people, including people of his own party. The, the point about this matter was that, you remember Honorable Ayariga was being investigated by the special prosecutor, and Michael Kwe said that you can't do that. When a member of parliament invokes the, the immunities of parliament, you have to listen to, the, to those arguments. Immunities of parliament simply means that a member of parliament says that you cannot send me to a police station, you cannot send me to court because I'm in parliament, parliament is not on recess and I'm working. And Michael Kwe stood by Honorable Ayariga, even though Ayariga was a member of the minority, the NDC. Michael Kwe insisted and went to the special prosecutor and spoke to him that you cannot haul a member of parliament before the court when he's doing parliamentary duties. Those are the privileges that are protecting members of parliament that the speaker stood by. So it, it clearly showed that the speaker uh, was going to stand by the rules of parliament and was even going to do it when it concerned minority members who were not members of his party. Michael Kwe clearly did that uh, with the Honorable Ayaga situation. Oh, I've lost something. Sorry, let me, let me put this together. Okay. Yeah, okay, so this one is not properly written, but we'll work around it. So it says that when MPs wanted policemen, uh, or when the police wanted MPs, the investigations allowed, were allowed to continue, but the police were invited to come to the speaker's conference room to interview members. Okay, so it's not properly written, so forgive me for that, but let's come to it. The point being made here is that when, still around the Ayariga situation, when the uh, police were looking for members of parliament, and they wanted to talk to them, Professor Michael Kui, a Speaker of Parliament, insisted that the police should come to Parliament House, sit with the MP in his conference room, and interrogate the MP in protecting the sanctity and the dignity of a member of Parliament of the Republic of Ghana. And he did this for both NDC MPs and MPP MPs equally. So that's the point being made for him. As I'm saying, we have investigated some of the things that Michael Kwe has done as Speaker of Parliament because he's the incumbent and he needs to be judged uh, by that. Okay, are we done with inclusiveness? Okay. Uh, this one is consensus building. People talk about consensus building. They say that he ensured that both sides of the House agreed on a number of issues on consensus building. Um, uh, that's it. Let's go to the next one. Uh, okay, if I push it, it goes. It doesn't go. Okay, uh, private members bill. Now, this was what excited me particularly because uh, some of us in the media and civil society had been talking about private members bill for a very long time. He passed the first ever private members bill, road traffic bill, 2020. This opens a big door for the public to participate in parliamentary business. Now, uh, so you can see that on the screen. Private members' bill is not allowed. Not that it's not allowed, but you can't pass a private members' bill in the history of Ghana's parliament since 1992. Every bill, that is the laws that parliament passed, it comes from the party in power. So the party in power will pass a law through their minister and it goes to parliament. Parliament passes the law, but the law is always initiated by the party in power. Michael Quay came and said, you cannot do that. Let's change it. Let's allow every member of parliament to pass a bill. So if you and I, Kofi Mensah, Amma, we think that parliament should pass a law, we look for a member of parliament, we go to him, we tell him, and then he can pass the law. And that's how the, the first one was passed. For the uh, past first private member's bill, the road traffic bill 2020. Also, organizations, the, the green people, environmental protection agency, the, those who want to protect the life of animals, those who want to protect aquaculture, all such people can come together and then pass a bill. That's now allowable in Ghana's parliament, the private member's bill. Professor Michael Kwe said at his inauguration that in the life of the parliament that he was leading as speaker, he was going to ensure that ordinary Ghanaians can come together, put a law together, get an MP to pass it. And that has happened. That's very significant. That, that's, that's, very, that's, that's full marks uh, for Professor Michael Kwe. And then the, finally, uh, proactivity on COVID-19. And it says that during COVID-19, Professor Michael Kui was proactive. He got all members of parliament tested. You remember that? Members of parliament tested and they didn't tell us who tested positive and who tested negative, but they told us that uh, all members of parliament had been tested. So for these matters that Michael Kui has uh, established during his period as a speaker of parliament, some people believe that it is the time now for Michael Kui to be given a second term. After all, they say the president has a second term, the vice president has a second term, the speaker is a third man in the action and he can have a second term as well let me go back to the photographs can i do that uh, okay they'll put the photographs up right now so we conclude by indicating to you that the race is currently between the two gentlemen uh, one from the western region the legendary um, freddie blay 
and uh, and uh, this man the uh, also legendary professor michael quid incumbent yes freddie blay that uh, he's what some people are tipping him to be the next speaker of parliament based on some of the things i've said and based on other things that we may not know but some people are taking freddie blay and we have just given you the credentials uh, justice doche is out we believe at this stage unfortunately it would have been brilliant for the democracy but given the numbers of parliament maybe not at this time uh, let's now go to the other one professor michael quay uh, is going to come soon. Yes, that's Professor Michael Quay, uh, whose credentials I've given as an incumbent Speaker of Parliament, uh, the kinds of things that he had achieved for the Parliament is what I've just told you. So, the decision is yours to make. Uh, that's, that's how we think parliamentary speakership is shaping up. And for purpose of clarification, we have done this on the basis of what has been gazetted at the Electoral Commission. The numbers that have been gazetted at the Electoral Commission could change. We don't know when it will change, but courts of law can actually change it. For now, though, the MPP has a majority of one. That's what is official. That's what has been gazetted. So these analysis have been presented based on that record. The record that the Electoral Commission has sent to uh, the Assembly Press to gazette the results, it is based on that record that we have conducted these analysis that given the situation right now the new patriotic party would be those who will be choosing the speaker and if it is them we think that there are three people in contention for now we think there are two in contention professor michael quay versus freddie blee after the break we'll be right back this is good evening Ghana. <laughs>